And it's time for our second match here in week eight of EGFC Rocket League. Uh, we've got Connecticut taking on Butler as the Huskies looking for revenge in this rematch against the Bulldogs. This is going to be the match of the day, I think. Uh, I mean, the last three games, I think, are going to be really uh, competitive. But I think this one, there's a bit of an edge to it. Uh, as, as, as we saw Butler kind of call out uh, Connecticut uh, saying, uh, Anton, I hope you're watching it because they're, they predicted a clean 3-0 sweep. So let's see what the blue collar Bulldogs have got coming out for Butler versus the Huskies of UConn. There we go. Aaron Nutt, Anton, ready to go. I, I can't wait to see what Kai has up in store for these Huskies. Yeah, it's... Uh, Munch, Morales, and Kai here on the pitch for Butler. Uh, and looking to relive the magic as they had a 3-2 win over UConn. One of their only two losses. That was way back in week number three. That one going all the way to game five. Oh, and Kai misses the opener. Kai had an opportunity there and just couldn't get a square hit on it. It bounces to the outside. Another attempt will be thwarted by Darren Nutt. Morales is holding the midfield line, but oh, that was a sketchy moment there for for the Huskies. I think we're going to have a multitude of sketchy moments throughout this game. We're going to be on the edge of our seats here as these two powerhouses here uh, are looking to take a battle to each other. And I mean, they're not nice little carry in there. Nice little bit of mechanical skill does get a, end up getting dispossessed. Uh, in the offensive third, but still Kaker on the side there, being able to keep the ball in the offensive third. Nice little set in front of the uh, in front of the net. Still, uh, it's been a little bit herky jerky here, Jeff. As we're looking at, you know, uh, them trying to fill each other out. There's a lot riding on this game for both sides. Uh, the seeding going into the playoffs is a big consideration here. Huskies have really slowed it down after an explosive start from the Bulldogs. Butler came out very fast. Yukon with a good steal. Stair Nuts able to put that one back deep and grab the big boost along the way. Has Kaker in the middle looking for that pass. Morales up for the defense. Able to get some of it, but not Ooh. enough. Kaker puts it off the backboard. Anton coming in for it. Kai still in the way. Won't let the rebound go through. All three players from Yukon getting a handle on that one. Nobody able to find the back of the net. And certainly not for lack of trying. Baker receives another pass, but with a player in front of him has to just boot it back to the outside. Good job from the Huskies maintaining possession here on this assault. Anton working off the wall, but had two defenders to get past, and Morales is able to sneak the ball away. Baker comes through, beat to it, loses out the 50, but Munch can't put the ball home. Well, I mean, this has been a filling out period here for the first uh, two minutes and 40, or two minutes and 15 seconds here. Uh, some quality chances for both sides. Uh, best one is coming from Connecticut. Well, that's a great shot from Anton. Forces a save out of Kaker and Morales gets demoed for their, uh, you know, looking at them moving forward. Man, this has been uh, this has been crappy so far. Not what we expect from a UConn team. Uh, we expect them to be really disciplined in their challenges and, and in their rotations. We know that the blue collar oh. Butler Bulldogs, there it is, the midfield dispossession and Kai takes full advantage. Yeah, it was just an unfortunate touch. Uh, as that ball went backwards, it's not at all where UConn wanted that ball to go. Uh, and Kai is not gonna miss those, seizes that opportunity and gets our first goal of the series. Well, uh, we're out the gate finally, uh, just over halftime here in game number one. Uh, nice little carry coming through. That was a very important uh, challenge there coming in from Kai and uh, not afraid of these 50-50 challenges. I'm expecting this to get very physical uh, here in probably the next 30 seconds as uh, we are going to start seeing UConn trying to press for that equalizing goal. Bunch with a nice block oh, there. No. Not going to allow it to happen. Kaker trying to race back for it as the ball slowly walking back in. It's a... Oh, my goodness. It's a long-distance dunk. As much it's just angled perfectly. The slow roll in as Kaker just helplessly watches it drift to a 2-0 lead. 48 miles an hour, the full length of the pitch. That has some venom on it as it went down, and obviously you lose some, some momentum as it goes down. But still, 48 miles an hour is about the average speed of a goal anyway. It's nice little carry oh. through. Double tap. No joy there for Anton. It was so close. Darren might get a chance here, but it's not going to be a quality one. That one's sent aside. Anton able to punt it in. That goes off the <laughs> interesting little bounce off the post. 
Darnut's turn. Also denied. Good backboard defense from Munch. Ball booted back down. UConn kept a, kept Anton in the back line this time. No cherry picking allowed. Morales puts a laser on. Goal, though. Steals that right off the bumper of Anton. Look at this shot. Yeah, it was a challenge coming in uh, from Munch. Uh, that's an own goal, unfortunately. But still, I mean, the, the premise was there. They had the the momentum going forward. They had the rotations. They completely uh, pickpocketed poor UConn there. And uh, I tell you what, Butler have come out the gate with fire in their eyes. Yeah, Butler coming in 5-2 and two on the day. Uh, it's been looking so strong this season. They have really stepped up their game here in Season 4 EGFC. And now with a, a solid 3-0 lead. It took until nearly the two-minute mark to to get rid of the stalemate, to get rid of the 0-0. But once they did, Butler have, have come alive and started to find some weaknesses, some holes in this defense. Punishing the aggression coming out of the Huskies. Bulldogs up. Trying to play defense and will successfully do so. Morales able to get a nice touch over to Munch. Munch into the corner. Back pass to Kai. Kai waiting for it along the wall. Anton comes in, wins it out. Able to get it over a defender, and Kaker running down to try to follow up on it. Nice block from Kai and a clear from Munch. Good one, two from the defense, and chemistry looking on point. Kai said it really wasn't on display in week seven. Man, it looks like they are in full rhythm here today. The Bulldogs will take game one. Yeah, I mean, this is fantastic work out of them. And there we see some, uh, some aggression, uh, maybe a little bit of a... A little bit of anger, a little bit of hostility, a little bit of uh, venom coming out from UConn in the demolition there as time expired. But man, I mean, look at this. Nine shots to five. And uh, Butler had the uh, had the lesser of them. <laughs> and they have the three nil uh, win there in game number one. So I tell you what, Jeff, uh, it's been quiet. Yeah, I mean, there, there's been moments of aggression that have come out of, of Connecticut, but it doesn't seem like they're playing as a as a hive mind. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed from Butler, uh, as opposed to season three, and I mentioned this before on broadcast, is that they really do have this hive mind. They are looking for each other. They are trying to find the outlet pass. And yes, there's going to be moments of individual skill. But the big thing that we've been noticing here, Jeff, is that when they dispossess somebody, when they take the ball, when they intercept a pass, they're looking for a teammate. They're looking to get forward. They're looking to get aggressive off the off the back. So this is where the big difference has been for Butler this season is the aggression and the synergy. And Morales uh, has been the uh, ace maker going into their team. There we go. Big demo right out the gate, Jeff. Hey, Anton just sitting still for way too long. Good capitalization from the Bulldogs, and it's going to get them into the blue zone. Anton trying to work left around the weak side of the defense, but Jared is there. Oh, excuse me. That was Morales that was there. Jared, that was the player on your screen. Shot here for Morales. Get that upper 90. Darinette does a good job getting a chunk of that ball and able to keep it out of the net. Morales is right there in the third still, though. Finally, Anton is able to clear the zone, but has no boost to work with. And he's going to go right back down the other way. Does get a demo and stole that corner boost there at the very end. Not a lot of resources here for the Bulldogs. They're going to lose control. And UConn looking for the opening goal. That's a dangerous ball in front. No follow-up, though. Everybody was looking for some boost and wasn't able to capitalize on what was a really dangerous cross of, across the face of goal. So uh, a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Uh, they don't seem like they're chuggling along on their, on their same page like we normally see the Huskies do. But the Bulldogs, on the conversely, they are absolutely firing on all the same brain cell right oh. now. So the synapses are so good. What I want to see from Connecticut. Uh, right now, you know, the tempo is, is a little bit uh, thready. I, I want to see them slow this down and start to insert their physical play into this. Well, that's much. Both missed that. Kai has to come up and finally clear the ball. Kaker demoed. Don't even get anywhere with it. Morales looking at an empty net. Oh my God! Flips it over Anton. Holy cow! <laughs> that is a musky flip at five hours. See what I That is just disgusting. <laughs> Absolutely posterizes the the netminder. One nil lead, and forty five seconds off the clock. 
Approaching halftime here. God, that, I'm still just jaw dropped at that goal. Oh. Uh, Anton though was unfazed. Able to strike right back. It was off of uh, this pass here from Kaker. Look at that range from Anton off the wall to get out the top of the car. Not nearly as flashy, but equally as impressive. Well, I mean that that that's an angry goal uh, after getting dunked on basically uh, in in your face. Uh, that might have woken up the Huskies. Uh, one one as two minutes have crossed. Uh, two minutes off the clock have crossed our PlayStation here. Now, what do we see out of the Huskies? Uh, I mean, they've gotten dispossessed. They've been kind of muscled around. They've been out tempoed so far. The passing has been superb from oh. them from Butler. I mean, still a follow up shot is going to be online. Darren Nutt coming up with the save. This is what I'm expecting from the Huskies right now. I'm expecting them to get a lot more physical. I want them to really command control of this game and take it to Butler. Butler's not going to take that sitting down, though. The Blue Collar Bulldogs ready to go and ready to get this fight underway. That Morales able to just pick the pocket of Anton there. Kaker does manage to put one on. Munch to the sky. Morales over to Kai. All three players getting in touch with the ball. Hits the ground. But unfortunately for Kai, it spits out in a bad direction. Straight down. Right in front of Darinut. Who's screaming towards the net with a lot of his to work with. Actually put that ball way too hard. It pinched out uh, all the way across. Anton tried to follow it up. But couldn't find the angle. Morales dumps it back out to midfield. Anton with a touch. Kai comes through over the top. And able to knock it into the blue half. This is the ball to Darinut. Not real possession, but a weak touch results in Munch getting the ball. Screaming in on near post side. Follow-up shot from Morales. Whoa. Just barely knocked wide by Anton. Yeah, great reflexes. I mean, that, that would have been a stellar goal if that had gone in. What a save once again from Kaker covering up the upper 90 near post. And now you want to think, can I have another go? Can I have another shot? Can I get anything out of this? And, I mean, now it's going to have to be counter attack coming from uh, from the Huskies. They have been really put on their back heels, Jeff. This is not what I'm used from UConn. 75 seconds and a tied game two, and Darinut finds a demo in the net. Ball lands in Anton's lap. Trying to sneak in, but can't get past the two defenders. Darinut gets in the way, but the ball still presses into the blue half. Kaker trying to maintain control through the air this time. Munch able to disrupt it just enough. Huskies lose possession as we cross that one minute mark. Anton trying to sneak around. That was a crazy little move through the sky, but won't result in very much. Kai with a shot. Anton is there. Kaker with the follow up. Drop it off the wall. Munch coming in far side, looking for Kai in the middle. Good play from Morales. Good positioning here from Butler as they've done a good job of maintaining this line and not allowing UConn any room to work. 23 seconds, and now they're on the attack. Oh. Morales looking for it. Can't quite get it in. Grabs a big boost. Kai's got another pass coming in, and Morales with another look. That one doesn't go either. Munch is going to put it towards the net, but Anton's able to backpedal enough to get a piece of that ball, and we're still at 1-1. Ball in the air. Morales going for it. Anton with the save. Kai drops it in. Kaker oh, comes across oh, oh. to keep it at 1-1 and send us into overtime. This is the game that we were expecting, Jeff. Back and forth action. The saves have been crazy in position. The rotations, everything clean. No way. I thought that was going to be just a one-second or two-second overtime thriller winner. But no, no. It is not going down the way of the Dota. Nice shot. Nice goal. There's the equalizer. There is the go-ahead goal. Our series is all tied up 1-1. Morales tries to go to the outside. Ball gets past him. Kaker lined up for it. Beautiful goal. Beautiful game. It took it to overtime to make it happen, and Connecticut tie up the series. Now, well, I'll, well, well. <laughs> go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> and by all means, no. Let's, uh, what, what are your thoughts here, Billy? Well, well, well. Uh, the clean 3-0 has not happened. <laughs> Butler... You have been called out. You have been put on notice that this is not going uh, just exactly the way you thought it was going to go. Shots were way in favor of Butler that time. I mean, we're talking 11 to 4, and you only get one out of it. So sometimes quality uh, over quantity is the way to go, especially in, in soccer and car ball. It doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes the better shot just happens to work through. Uh, I mean, there was chances for Butler to really open this wide open, and they're finishing. 
really was suffering there in game number two. So that's something they're going to have to look forward to here uh, going into game number three. Well, Connecticut, hold on, hold on. though. I got I to stop you there. I mean, Connecticut had 10 saves on 11 shots. Their defense was immaculate. I don't know about Butler's finishing being lacking as much as I think Connecticut's defense just really stepped up and shut him down. Ah, I mean, we can agree to disagree on it because uh, I mean there was a couple Insane's that saves on eleven shots. Are you kidding me? There was there was some opportunities for them to get in there. I mean, we're used to seeing Butler finish those off. I'm standing my ground here. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, we might be as a stalemate uh, as our series is right now. And Connecticut, well, they don't want this to go to five. Connecticut have had two series go to game five this season. They lost both of them. One of them against this very team back in week three. Connecticut want to close Ooh. this out in a 3-1. I mean, otherwise, uh, well, at least history is not on their side. Still tied up in this game, number three. Kai wasn't quite able to get the angle on to, to cut that sharp, get it on target. Husky's heading back the other way. Bulldogs with two on the near post. Kai has to come in and actually bail that one out. Take it from the outside. Darren out in the sky as Kai beats them to it. Now long outside. Doesn't need that center boost. Rather go for the ball. We're also up for it. Looking for that man in the middle. Knew they had much there. It was a nice pass off the wall, but two players from Connecticut able to intercept. Now it's Kai's turn through the sky. Took a little too long. Anton able to move up, meet them when the 50. Darenut with a nice move off the back wall. Pushes that one all the way back into the white half. And Kai returns the ball all the way to the cinders. Well, that was a shot that really shouldn't have been a shot. It kind of got took a little deflection. The one thing I'm noticing out of Connecticut, though, is that the uh, the pressure in front of the goal on the ball line. There we go. Anton with their first lead of the day. And this was just scrambled eggs in the back, Jeff. There, Nobody knew who wanted to capture the ball. Nobody knew who was going to cover goal line there. The communication, you could see it on our screen. It broke down for Butler there. Uh, 48 seconds in, there's the lead. The first one of the day for the Huskies. Scrambled eggs, huh? Yep. I'm sticking yeah. with it. We're, we're past breakfast time. We're past breakfast time. Just Maybe saying. for you. I always like <laughs> breakfast scrambled eggs. <laughs> breakfast, breakfast all for day. dinner, folks. Yeah, yeah, breakfast, yeah, breakfast for dinner. All... <laughs> <laughs> Kicker with a nice 50 here. He's going to push it into the wide half. This one's dropped back to Ed Todd. And he's going to send it right back over to Kaker. No. Intercept comes through. And, well, the Bulldogs still end up on the back foot when it's all said and done. Kai trying to work the way out of the corner. Still can't escape. Kicker's going to get touch on that one, but Munch is able to get in front of the ball. Good challenge. And it's going to give Morales a shot here. No, never mind. The Huskies have upped their pace a bit, and the Bulldogs are struggling at the moment. The defense is just continued to elevate here from the Huskies, and now they're looking to do the same in the offensive zone. Yep. Morales along wow. the wall, but Darren's going to push it in. Kaker might have a chance here. Kai meets him to it, going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the skies, and the ball drops down. Kai going back up for it. That's not a great touch. Kai has to just settle to push it to the outside and runs out of boost in the process. Kaker's going to get a shot. Morales, thankfully, for the Bulldogs, comes through with the save. That was a nice little booty bump there uh, from Anton to keep the ball in the zone. Loose ball in front. That should be a goal. There it is. Kaker cleaning up the trash in front. 2-0 lead. Minute 47 left on the clock. Uh, Butler looking in shambles right now, Jeff. Their rotations have completely broken down. I am not exactly sure what's going on with the Bulldogs right now, but the Huskies have upped the tempo. They've upped the physicality uh, in these challenges in front of the Nets. And uh, Morales, if they don't get a good touch with this ball, could be facing a hat trick deficit. Fortunately, they do. At least fortunately for the Bulldog fans out there. Anton keeping it in the zone. Rotation from uh, from Connecticut, excuse me. Other C squad. Going to lay them on the defense as much as trying to come in for a shot, but doesn't get a chance. Not quite quick enough on that one. Anton with a nice little move. Able to get over one. Grabs the boost. Eventually loses control. Pass to Kai. He's going to go off the backboard. Kaker with the intercept. 
Anton with a bit of a dump and chase here as the Huskies just try to move into the offensive zone. Really, I mean, look, they're just spreading the ball all across the line, and it opens up the defense wide. Kaker could drive a truck through that massive opening in the box. That was an incredible setup. Yep, I mean, they're just splitting the field right now. And when you switch the field like that, uh, it pulls resources out of the defense. Uh, it pulls the sight line as well. So when you're constantly going from one side to the other, the, uh, the defending squad doesn't know where the shot's actually going to come from. And that was a beautiful center in from Anton Kaker, bearing it perfectly. 3 nil lead, 45 seconds left. God, the Bulldogs defense just got frozen uh, on that last goal. That was uh, another just impeccable goal here at EGFC. We've seen quite a few of them in this series already, and we're only in game three. Staring up with a big save is going to keep the Bulldogs scoreless as the ball heads back towards the white net. 24 seconds, and Connecticut is just going to be happy to, to maintain possession here. Darnut boots it down. You can see kind of just playing conservatively along the line. Centering pass to Kaker's going to go. What a shot. That is fantastic team play right there. Just the recognition out of the corner here. Darren out with a beautiful pass and then going back against the grain of play. Upper 90. You love to see it. That is classic football right there. And I uh, mean, there's nothing that the team can do against that right now. UConn definitely had their Wheaties today. They took that challenge straight on. And now they're putting up an O for here onto the, well, I say that Butler gets a consolation goal two seconds left. So maybe they will be able to build on that going into game number four. But they're going to be down 2-1. Uh, and if, if the Butler Bulldogs want this to go five, they're going to take game number four. And, I mean, it's, it's all done to dust here in game number three. Uh, the winds have certainly shifted in this series since game one. Uh, that was a 3-0 shutout for the Bulldogs. It has been all Connecticut Huskies since as this was uh, four goals on six shots held butler to minimal sh uh, shots themselves hat trick for caker in that one what a comeback what a game from connecticut i said they wanted to close it out in four and they're on track to billy i mean where is kai right now kai has been a non-factor here since game number two uh in connecticut i, I it's it's been a combination of pressuring both Morales and Kai, uh, when they do push forward, Munch has kind of sort of played the uh, the third man role here. Uh, also, the quick touches, the quick snap passes that are coming out of Connecticut are completely flat footing the Bulldogs right now. So Butler have got to get their act together here. Otherwise, they're going to lose here to the uh, to the Huskies and, uh, you know, really endanger their positioning in the seedings going into the playoffs. Guy with a strong opener, demo in the net. Follow-up touch goes high, and Munch gets it off the backboard. That was all Butler, holy cow. From the moment this clock started, all nine seconds was just Butler dancing around the Connecticut defense. Good opening, good way to start off game four. And great traffic in front by Kai. Uh, knew that they didn't have a shot on the goal, so they just played it off the backboard, got the traffic in front, and that allowed the shot to come through and much buries at home. So Morales and company are uh, dealing now. They put that, put that last game behind them. Nice save from Kai. That is an amazing save. Yeah, Kai had a plethora of saves in game one. Comes through with a huge defensive play on that one. And the one, the one game, well, uh, these games have been fairly close. The last game was the only one that was more than a two-goal deficit. So each one of those big saves like that, huge. Absolutely monstrous effort from Kai uh, to start this off. Munch is going to send that pass towards the middle. Kai waiting back. Third man He's going to pick up that ball. Take it up into the air. Carrying themselves all the way down into the zone. Morales is in the net, was looking for a demo while Munch was going to be the shooter. But the ball just ended up in Connecticut's favor. Bulldogs back in over the top. Morales looking for some work on this right-hand side. Everybody from Butler kind of crowding the wall on this attack. Oh. Darnut comes through and gets the touch. Munch gets the demo. Shot wide. It forces the same from Anton, though. So, I mean, they're starting to find their range again. They're starting to find their synergy once again. And, bah, yeah, shots are starting to pepper the goal. Anton has come up with two huge saves in the past 10 seconds. And that was a big steal there to intercept Kai on the one tap. 
Darenet with a big save as well. Bulldogs. Ooh. Trying to muscle their way back into the zone. Kaker. Gonna win out that race. Takes up into the air. You kind of been really working off of this dump and chase kind of approach. They're, they don't seem to be doing a whole lot of a midfield passing uh, or, you know, working side to side here in the past minute or so. It's It's been more dump and chase. And... I, I, I can't even feel that the Bulldogs are starting to, to react to it here. Part of taking control in this game. It's Kai with a big steal all the way across through the sky. Oh, loses oh. it at the last moment. Yeah, Waterfall Shot doesn't find any joy there. And yeah, I have to agree with you, Jeff. I, I think that uh, they've become wary uh, of any kind of cross passes. They're trying to look and see if there's a trailing Connecticut player behind the run of play. Uh, they've been sniffing it out left and right here. So I think they may be on to what the Huskies have brought to game number four and three. Well, now uh, we'll see what kind of work can get done there. Big demo in front of the goal, but no joy off the goal. And now your third person's back, Morales. Nice little booming clear. I want to see uh, maybe Butler take a couple of pages out of the Husky book. And there you go. Crossing field, splitting the defense, and making the switch there. That is a fantastic follow from Munch once again. Using the roof to flip that thing up. Get it in the top right-hand corner of the box. Second goal here from Munch in this game. It's going to win the kickoff as well. Staring up, booming shot over to Anton. What a long distance pass to Anton. Setting them up beautifully here for the leading goal. Or excuse me, the, the comeback goal. At least they've cut the lead in half, Billy. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. They cut the lead in half. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it's good work. Um, a little bit of a double commit on the wall, though. Gets punished immediately. So that's got to be in the back of the Bulldogs' mind right now is, no double commits on walls, otherwise you're going to get burned out on the other side. Nice touch from Darna. Avoid Kai. Gets to pass another. Oh, Much doesn't get a solid touch as well. Tries to bounce it off the wall. Anton shot goes, and now we're tied up. Yep, there's Equalizer, and that is a horrible touch from Munch. I'm sorry, buddy, but that is just not it, Chief. Uh, double pinch there from Kai. Just squirts out in front. Of the waiting arms of Anton, Anton will bury those nine times out of ten, and there is a, well, there's a 90% conversion right there. Now, 95 seconds left on the clock here. Uh, you, we've seen the ebb and flow of this game go back and forth, Jeff. What do we see here in the last, uh, you know, minute and a half? I, I mean, the physicality, Connecticut starting to ratchet it up. Much on the outside. Can't get the boost. Has to rotate back. Morales with a touch. Trying to get over to Kai, but defense holds. Tie game with 70 seconds left. And the ball is heading towards the wide goal. Kaker has back up there. Oh, nice little direction from Kai. Gets it behind the second player. And this has opened things up for ballers. They go in front of the net. Anton coming through. Able to sneak that one out from underneath Butler. And just as quickly... The ball has gone back and forth to both ends of the pitch. Morales actually trying to protect midfield at this point. Anton, lone player, going up for that touch, but it gets intercepted. Towards the oh. net it goes. Kaker narrowly avoiding disaster and blocks the rebound as well. Uh, so what's happened here is Kai has actually rotated to the third man roll. Nice. There's a shot. Point blank. Wow. Full team play there. Look at the touch from Kai. Gets the flip reset in the air. Puts a drill there. And then Munch just cleaning up the trash in front of the net. 28 seconds left. Jeff, this is coming down to the wire. This has actually been a pretty competitive game number four. Impeccable positioning there from Munch. Knowing exactly if Kai wasn't able to put that ball home, Munch knew exactly where it was going to end up and just sat waiting for it. I uh, just didn't really have to do much outside of that. Smart play made for a very easy goal. And this could be Butler coming back in the series, sending us to that elusive game five. Zero seconds. Anton has nobody in front of them. Ball's still up. Kicker underneath. Oh, what? Little flick over no. Kai. That one's going to drop. Ooh, what? it's still down yet. There it is. There it is. Didn't okay. White going Ooh. Connecticut's favor. 
All right, Butler sending us that game five. Connecticut have never won a game five. This one's going down to the wire. Well, I mean, the aggression came out from Butler there. Connecticut had a great grasp of the game. Um, the 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 side to side passing has really impressed me. Also, the willingness to rotate two and back when Butler is bringing that double headed pressure coming from Morales and Kai. Uh, Munch has been kind of the silent hero here, not only on the defensive end, but also when we see them moving and inserting themselves into the offense. That's where we're seeing a lot of the value come out for Munch. So, I mean, we got two full squads here. Both sides are wanting to win here. We're going to game five. I didn't think this game was going to go any other way, honestly, nope. uh, because I, I thought that Connecticut had, uh, you know, they had a chip on their shoulder. They got called out by Butler uh, in an interview a couple a couple weeks ago. So uh, definitely the uh, the fire has been in both sides' belly. Here we go, banging on game number five. Oh, Morales with a chance right off the kickoff. Everybody from Butler right hand side. Kai trying to move towards near post. Oh, that three v one. Go to the other side. The defense all tried to congregate on the other side, and Kai made a smart move of crossing the pitch. The pass just couldn't quite connect. The defense at UConn able to react, able to adjust in time. Ball spit out from midfield. There's an opportunity. Ooh, good save from Munch. Not only to, to just redirect the shot, but get it out of the box. Not allow any rebounds to fall. Darnett looking for a chance here, and Kai's going to take a similar defensive stance. Really good awareness defensively from Kai. No one... You know, exactly how to position the car to not let the ball fall right into that dangerous zone. Oh, look at the double top off the back. Oh, oh, the, wow, the goal line is going in. Oh, there it Faker. is. Oh, what a whiff. That was a, oh, that's a heartbreaking whiff. Watch this. Jump, the touch, the float back. Nope. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much you can do with that, Jeff. I mean, Caker had already committed to the touch. It dangled on the goal line. There's no chance for them to flip out of that. Minute in, we got a goal. I mean, yeah, two defenders right there. Connecticut have had a phenomenal stalwart defense all day, and you let that go? Oh, my goodness. What is this a Game 5 curse here for the Huskies? What am I witnessing? Uh, we have not cursed them. It's, this is not our fault. I can go ahead and safely say that. We were, we were hoping for a Game 5, but I don't think that... Uh, that, I don't think that we curse them. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put that down. My, yeah, my dogs well, agree, I, I too. They say, say no. Did. I didn't say it was a <laughs> curse. It just, they haven't Ooh. performed in a game five yet this season, and that was uncharacteristically poor out of the defense. Uh, of, a, of a very strong team, on typically on both fronts. It's why they're 6-2 uh, and two or 5-2 and two coming into this. Morales looking to put up goal number two. Punch back to the midfield, much in a position. Morales wanted to go for that, but couldn't figure out exactly how to approach it. Ends up just bypassing it, and the Huskies get control. Goes over Morales into the back. Munch gets demo. Kaker scores. We're tied up. That's physicality. And, I mean, it was a bad touch or a bad look at the touch from Morales. Look at this. Uh, and once again, Morales just completely whiffing on the ball and maybe threw his uh, defender out of, out of direction there. But the physicality, the, the demo right in front of the goal, yeah, that's a beautiful goal for them. Now less than three minutes here. Game number five. Somebody's going to six and two. Somebody's going to five and three here, Jeff. And it's all about seeding. Going into the fall split playoffs. That's a nice ball going in. Oh, and a beautiful goal to follow it up. Kai able to get the bounce. Get this touch. And Kai to Munch. Munch gets it off the backboard. And Kai comes in to back it up. Kaker was so close, saw the play developing, unfolding before their eyes, but couldn't get to it in time. Bulldogs have regained the lead. I got knots in my stomach right now. I think we're going to overtime. Uh, I, I think that UConn's going to get totally ticked off and just start railing off some goals here. But I say that they get demoed out of, for their joy. And uh, yeah, I mean, we cross halftime, one goal lead. It's going to come down to a touch here or there. Anton has been winning 50s left and right here in game five. That one almost resulted in the tying goal. Much able to clear it out after holding their breath there for a moment. Anton pass back down to Kaker. Kaker flipping it up towards the net. Morales is there. 
And it's a bit of a ping pong battle here in the middle. One where it looks like Kai is going to walk away with possession, but doesn't have the boost to follow it up. And Kaker is able to clear it all the way back down where Darren's waiting for it. Kaker comes over the top to follow through a ball, but they lose a player in the process. They do not have a full attack. Darren was waiting along the wall. Anton respawns, come in and get the touch. And they can't look over the tying goal with a buck 45 left on the clock. Morales isn't having any of it. Munch with a good play, able to win that 50 over the top. Chases the ball down into the corner. Anton sitting parked in front of him. The ball does a slow roll around. But this time, it is the Bulldogs who lose a player on their attack. And it's back to midfield. It goes. All this time, the <laughs> clock is working against the Huskies. What a smart touch along the wall there from Munch. Uh, just stalling up the play, waiting for the player to respawn in. And then the, just the immediate looking towards the center, looking for a player. Here comes some aggression coming from Connecticut, looking for a pass. The uh, backboard defense, once again, is holding solid for Butler. I mean, they are now sub 60 seconds before taking this game. Number five, oh, there's the goal. That might just do it. That, that feels like it, it could be the nail in the coffin. The dagger, as they say, proverbial as it might be. There's only 59 seconds for the Huskies to come back and tie this thing. Send us to that overtime that you're predicting. Plenty of time to do that. And I think that now we're going to see the tempo increase coming out from the Huskies. They've got to go forward with this. They've got to put all on the line because you're either going to win or you're going to lose uh, in the next minute. So why not throw everything on the board and just go for it? Oh, that was a nice setup. Two defenders went flying into the net from the Bulldogs. <laughs> oh, fortunately for them, uh, UConn were not able to finish that one off. And time with a couple of clever little touches out of the sky, able to send the ball back in the correct direction. Fortunately, it doesn't amount to anything as it's Kai over the top. Goes over the net, pass over to Morales. Kaker to Anton, 15 seconds. Anton gets over one. Kai playing very far back, easy clear. Into the blue zone once again. And this is looking like a third game five loss for UConn. Oh, Derrida might have been able to punch that one in and give it an opportunity for a kickoff goal, but it would have been, I mean, what an uphill climb. That, that would have been a 1% chance of them being able to claw this one back. It's Butler winning it for the second time here in the fall split in a five game thriller over the Huskies. Yep, but I mean, six shots to five, and I mean, it was a two goal margin, so. Uh, you guys can do the math. That's not my job. Uh, well, it is kind of my job, but I'm not going to take credit for the math here. So I tell you what, Butler, uh, they got punched in the mouth games two and three. Uh, they lost their way completely, but were able to recollect themselves. That goal in game number three with two seconds left is the reason why they get back into this game uh, because it gave them the belief again that they could actually score. Uh, and then they just pressed the gas button the entire way through games four and five. Uh, and this has been a fantastic showing here for both squads. I don't care if the Huskies lost or not. That was a hell of a series. And now, you know, one's team is six and two. That'll be Butler and the Huskies go to five and three. So they're going to have a little bit more difficult of an opponent going in uh, to their first round playoff game. Well, and I mean, of those three losses uh, for Connecticut, two of them are Butler. I feel like this is a this is a rivalry uh, in the making, or or perhaps just developing before our very eyes. Uh, particularly with the interview with Kai in Week Seven. Uh, I mean, and you know, they talk about how you know, a lot of these top players they play against each other either uh, in scrims or on ladder, even. Yeah. So I mean, like they know each other. They they. They know each other's styles a bit, uh, yeah. and this one, this one definitely feels uh, like it's getting a bit personal, Billy. It's getting a bit personal, almost like a Del Clasico uh, between Atletico Madrid and uh, Barca. So, I tell you what, uh, sure. it's been fantastic. It's been fantastic all season long. I mean, it, it hasn't gone three nil for anybody. Uh, Kai does not find the uh, does not find the prognostication there on the three nil easy sweep. That did not happen, my friend. But uh, we're going to throw it to a quick little break. We'll see. Uh, we are going to have an interview. We'll find out who that is when we get back with you guys in just a few moments. Uh, well, we are back, friends. I've got Morales here from the Butler Bulldogs. Thank you so much for coming to do this interview with us. Congrats on the win. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so this is the final game of the fall split. You end up six and two. Uh, this is this is your first year playing with the team. What, what were your thoughts here on the past eight games? Did uh, did you meet the squads or did the squad meet the expectations that you had coming in? 
Yeah, I think we exceeded expectations, honestly. Beginning of the year, it was really rough. We were uh, not the best, but I mean, we put the work in. Um, the two losses we had, I mean, the one against Seton Hall, we'll live with that. But the, uh, I think the Southern Utah game, we could have definitely pulled that one out. So we did some work, looked back in the replays, fixed some stuff. So I think we're good to go. No, it certainly looked great out there today. Was there, if you had to find one thing in particular that you fixed, that you kind of prowled, like, yeah, we actually, we grew and we, we improved on that. What would it be? I think mainly just our communication, like okay. our comms in game. I think at the beginning of the year, they were uh, horrific, if I do say so myself. <laughs> But we figured it out. We got our our rotation, found our found our spot in the in the roster. So I think we're all playing, doing what we do best. We're using what we can, using our skills to take us to the next level. I mean, you're you're looking good. You're looking good right now. All right. So now 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 comes the harder question. So you guys <laughs> come out uh, three zero game number one, and then you guys got punched in the mouth games two and three. What the heck happened? Because it looked like you guys completely lost your way. It looks like the comms went out the window. Oh. Uh, it looked like the the possession on the ball went out the window. What happened? I mean, yeah, you said it. It was just our comms again. Um, our manager was actually behind us. He was like, the comms are there, but we're just quiet. So, I mean, he, I think he like smacked my chair and said, be loud. And I, <laughs> I got loud and then we won. So I think it worked I mean, out my, pretty well. I tell you, my goalkeeper coach used to smack me upside the head when I wasn't paying attention when I was playing soccer. Uh so, I mean, that, that definitely works. Um, all right. So, you guys obviously come back four and five, and you guys close it out three, two. So, look, uh, I've been, we've been a big fan of yours from the change from last season. You, obviously, you weren't here last year because you were a freshman. What are your expectations for the playoffs, Morales? What do you guys – what is the what is the mark that you guys want to hit? Because you guys have already said that you've exceeded your season expectations. What about the fall split playoffs? Uh, we're going to win. I mean, like, we – We've already exceeded our expectations. I mean, there, I don't think there's much holding us back from going all the way other than ourselves. So, yeah, I mean, that's we're, we're just going to win it all. <laughs> I got one last quick question before we get out of here. Uh, Anton called out uh, <laughs> on last last time we, we saw you all in week seven. Uh, is, is this a rivalry in the making? This is the second time you've beat them both this season. Both times went to game five. I mean, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Is UConn your rivalry? I mean, at this point, I'd say so. I think they are the only game that's or the only team that's been able to take us to game five on a consistent basis. Every time we scrim them, it's been like almost dead even every time. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> as Kai said, we won, we won, we're two and zero right now. So I don't know, <laughs> I, not wrong. I love it. I love it. Uh, any shout outs you want to give before we let you get out of here? For sure, my teammates. Shout out to Coach Nick who uh, got us in the check mid series. Of course, my family <laughs> watching at home. And Brosev. Kai said to shout out Brosev. He's a legend around here. Brosev, <laughs> yes. You shouted out Brosev in week seven as well. And Anton. Yep, I love yep, that yep. guy. Cool guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's wow, up, right? What's up, there it Good is. Competition. <laughs> Good competition. He said uh, he oh, he said he ghost hit that last ball in zero seconds. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think he missed it. <laughs> well, let's go back and watch the replay on that one. Hey, man, yep, we, yep, we, yep. we appreciate you coming in and talking with us. Congrats on the win. Hey, thanks, guys. All right, all right. What a fantastic game that was. And uh, you know what? They're, we're just going to keep the hits coming. We are not done. We're going to take a break. When we come back, game three on the day, it's DePaul taking on Tennessee when we return with more EGFC Rocket League.